Hey everyone, I'm Owen from OTEC and today I'll be doing an unboxing on the ASUS RX570 Strix Gaming graphics card. So this is one of the higher end RX570s on the market, so it's right up there in price uh, usually because it's the Strix model which is the high end gamer brand from ASUS. It's not the cheaper Armor uh, Dual brand from ASUS or like the Armor series from MSI which are the lower end ones. So these are actually more expensive. So. Let's take a look at what it's like. Um, first, let's see the box. So you can see all the usual ASUS Strix graphics and also uh, the picture of the graphics card itself showing it in the front. Also, you got a three year warranty, at least in Indonesia. Also on top, there's not much, but you can see there's some paint spotches because my house is being painted. So this kind of got some paint spotches on it. Don't worry about it. It's not supposed to be like that. On the back, you also get some features like all the ASUS RSync RGB and also the 0db fan stop and also the asus auto extreme which i think is pretty cool because it means the graphics card is 100 percent crafted by robots not people and also it supports the asus gpu tweak and expert game caster obviously and it has this asus fan connect technology which is basically a four pin fan header on the graphics card that you can use to control case fans with so that's kind of cool because i think the hottest part of a and the gaming PC is the GPU, so I think it makes more sense to control case fans with GPU temperature instead of just CPU temperatures connected to the motherboard like usual. Also for the fans of this graphics card, it's supposed to be IP5X uh, dustproof rated fans, but in my experience, since I've used some of these for mining, um, they actually die quite fast. I've already got like a few of them dead on me the fans at least the graphics cards are fine it's just the fan died so i really don't like that because i i was expecting it to last quite a long time given its uh specification ratings also for some reason this one doesn't have all the accessories inside um anyways here's the speed setup guide and also the cd driver disk that you're supposed to throw away and download the latest driver from amd.com because that's the best way to use your graphics card but yeah um, I'm thinking I've opened this one before because it doesn't have the plastic uh, wrapping on it but anyways it's also supposed to have like an Asus accent sticker on here and here so that you can stick it there if you want to change color to orange or silver or black or something like that and it's also supposed to have an ROG branded uh, cable uh, wrapping thing to tie your cables down but it seems like I misplaced it on this one because apparently it's not here anyways here's the graphics card itself you can see immediately that it has two large fans which seems to be 90 to 100 millimeter fans I'm not sure but yeah this looks to be pretty large and this cools a uh, pretty large heat sinks which extend all the way from the back to the front of the graphics card as you can see and it has two heat pipes which kind of loops around and goes back to the heat sink although i would have loved to do, to see the heat pipe extend out the top because i think that looks cooler although except you know i'm not sure why they didn't do it because this side of the heat sink really doesn't look as good as this side in my opinion that looks much cooler also on the front you can see the four pin fan header for you to connect your case fans with and also on here an eight pin power connector which feeds the three phase of the vrm which is on this side and also the other three phase of the vrm gets power from the pci express slot on the bottom here so i don't really like that design because that means the motherboard will get loaded by a lot of power um, because you know half of the power from the gpu is getting drawn from the motherboard slot instead of all, all, all of the power from the 8 pin which it should be able to handle so i would have preferred if they power all the six pin i mean six power phases from the 8 pin power connector instead but anyways this has a pretty good heatsink so it should still overclock pretty well especially with the great pcb design of six phase instead of the older rx470 which is just a four phase which, you know, I've actually said in the RX470 unboxing that it's exactly the same as the 570 Strix, but it seems like it isn't. This has a better PCB because it's six phase instead of four, and it's on the right side of the PCB, so this is the cooler side in, well, in most cases. While on the 470, the VRM is on this side and just four phase, which runs hotter in most cases because it's, it's you know, towards the back, so the back fan receives less fresh airflow from your case. But anyways, one thing I don't like either is also this thing doesn't have a backplate, which is, you know, 
I think it's not forgivable because this is one of the more expensive four uh, 570s when other cheaper 570s can have backplates too, like from Sapphire, for example. So I think everyone should put backplates on 470s and 570s and stuff like that. And on the back, you can see all the display outputs. You got two DVI, one HDMI, and one display port. So I perf would have preferred MSI's way of doing it with two display ports and two HDMI and no, uh, just one DVI. But I guess this should work too because these are just adaptable to each other anyways. But anyways, um, I think that's about it to show the design. I mean, I don't, I'm not really a fan of the design because I think it looks kind of boring, which is just, you know, monotone. I know I'm kind of contradicting myself because on MSI video, I said that graphics card should be monotone and neutral if you want to put RGB, which by the way is this logo right here. That's the only RGB light, so it won't be very bright. It's just some light accenting, I guess. But you know, on the Strix, it looks kind of cheap with all the plastic on this, I think especially with all the angles and like fake PCB traces or something. It looks kind of cheap and cheesy in my opinion. I don't really like the looks of the new Strix cards. I would have preferred they did something different with this shroud, maybe a bit classier design like sapphires, which is just a simple shroud. It looks better in my opinion. But I guess this is a gamery card. So this design is basically inspired by gamery designs in my opinion, I think. But yeah, it's not my favorite design, but it looks alright, I guess, if you're installing it in your uh, PC, because with the RGB lit up, it actually looks pretty decent. Just that if it's off, it looks super bland, and it's basically super cheap looking with all the plastic. But anyways, that's my unboxing. This should be a pretty good 572, given it's a high-end Asus Strix model, with a pretty good heatsink, and also a pretty good PCB. Although again, like I said, I would have preferred the VRM to just feed from the 8-pin only. But anyways, if you have a newer motherboard, I guess that shouldn't be a problem. So yeah, that's it for this unboxing. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if you do, please leave a like, and please click subscribe to see more of my future videos. Thanks for watching.